Better get a good night's sleep, I think, before we start recording the next episode. Been a little while, so I want to make sure I'm fully rested. Ah, good night, Snapshot 11W50A. Good night, Minecraft world. Oh, I feel strange. Wait, wh why am I in a boat? Where am I? Oh, hate that. Oh no, I'm having one of those dreams again. Wait, Jeb? Is that you? <laughs> wait, wait, I, I don't understand. Ah, <laughs> oh, that's better. A new world type? I wonder if... Whoa, did we just upgrade in my sleep? Hold on, hold on. I gotta try and pinch myself and see if I can wake myself up. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, this is really hard without fingers. Yeah. Yeah. Welcome back, everybody, to um, Minecraft The Journey with me, Bugman CX. I believe we're in snapshot 12W01A, the first snapshot of 2012. And um, yeah, we're in a pretty weird place. Um, I seem to be surrounded by slime at the moment, and I'm not really sure what's going on, but um, here I am. <laughs> Might as well make the most of it. You! You there! Wait. Wait, what? You! Where, where are we? What's going on? I, I, I don't know. I just got here. I, I don't know what's going on. Do you have any supplies? Any food? Uh, I don't know. Look, you're on your own. Uh, this is going to be one of those days. Now let's take a closer look at exactly what's going on here. You can see that I'm now in 12W01A and when I go to single player, create new world, I've got all these options which are still the same, but under more world options, world type now brings up super flat. And in super flat, I can generate structures on or off. That means villages, dungeons, etc. And we'll leave this world generation seed blank and we'll just give out, let's, let's call it super flat and create new world. And we are in, check it out, brand new super flat world. Obviously there's not very much around us except for all of this grass and uh, some slime over there and some slime over there. Yeah, we'll talk about all of that pretty soon. But right now let's have a look at our F3 screen. I am at minus 284 and minus 479, and my Y level is five. So I'm actually pretty low down in the world. And the first thing I'm going to do is dig down. We're gonna find out exactly what is beneath us because I'm pretty sure, <laughs> yep, pretty sure that this world is made up of grass, dirt, and then just our bedrock level. So pretty much there's nothing. Uh, I don't believe there's any stone gravel or any cave generation or anything like that. I think that the world generation for super flat is basically bedrock, dirt, dirt, grass. And that's what we have. Uh, look how many slime seem to be spawning here. Let's talk a little bit about these slimes. And what I'm going to do is just start walking around and see what else we can encounter in this, oh, in this strange world. The slime are spawning in because, uh, it seems like this is the ideal conditions for slime to spawn in. Now, the thing we know about slime is that slime can spawn in any light level. So right now with the full sun out like this, this is perfect light conditions for slime because it can be any light conditions. The second is that they spawn between Y level, well, they spawn below Y level 40. And as we saw, we're at Y level five. So pretty low down in the world. I mean, if this was actual world generation right now, we would be, uh, we'd be looking straight up and it would be somewhere up here. We would start to see actual dirt. 
So imagine this as being right down in the bottom of the world. And third, no other hostile mobs can spawn anywhere at the moment because there are no caves beneath us. The only spawnable places are here on the ground. So the game is actively trying to spawn mobs all the time. And the only one it actually can spawn is, wow, <laughs> look at them all. Oh, yeah, is the slime. And the worst thing I think about the slimes is that they're going to pose a problem. They're going to keep attacking me and I'm going to have to either avoid them or fend them off. Now, the next thing I'm noticing is that we are in one biome here, right? Notice how the grass doesn't change. Normally in the world, there are biomes and depending on which biome you're in, you get a slightly different grass color. There's none of that here. So I presume there are no biomes. So what does that mean for structure generation, like villages? Well, we'll have to wait and see. But I think the first priority has got to be food. So we need some passive mobs because I think passive mobs are going to be the key to survival out here in the wilderness. But where are they? I mean, I was hoping to see maybe a few by now, but let's see what we can get. We've got pigs give us pork, cows give us beef, chickens give us chicken, and sheep will give us nothing. They'll give us wool. <laughs> and uh, that's no good to us until we get access to wood. So if we can find some chickens, I might be able to set up a shelter and brave the night away <laughs> underground. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. And start to get the resources that we need to survive in this place. And we better do it soon because the nighttime is coming. Hey, little buddy. <laughs> oh, these are the harmless ones. I don't mind them. But, oh, them, awful. But why are we here? I mean, why were Super Flat Worlds introduced into the game in the first place? Well, it was Future Jeb who gave us some insight into how all of this came about. In 2022, he replied to Mogswamp, who is literally the king of Minecraft Superflat. I'll link to his channel below. He's been running a Superflat survival series for 10 years. So that is some serious Superflatting. Mogswamp asked, People in my comments are trying to tell me Superflat isn't meant for survival. Given that you invented it before creative mode was implemented and also included a structures option, I find that hard to believe. Can you clear it up once and for all? And Jeb replied, Superflat was added after speaking to Dead Mouse's manager at the first Minecon. This was intended for creative mode builds, but playing it in survival is a fun challenge. So that doesn't quite answer the question, but it does give us an insight into where it all came from in the first place. Look at this, it's officially sunset and I'm a bit worried because as soon as I start seeing mobs coming out, um, I'm sorry, I'm very sorry, I'm cowering underground. <laughs> I am not going to be able to survive the night if I just stay out here uh, with all of those relentless mobs. Oh, that's it, that's it, that's, that's it. Just checking, just checking all around me. We are officially cowering away underground. No creepers going to come in and get me, are they? I've been digging out underground here a bit because my goal is to try and farm up as many nighttime resources as I can as safely as possible. So I've got these little pits here and my hope is that a skeleton or a zombie or something will fall into this pit and we can just come and whack it or wait for it to burn up in the morning and hopefully get some drops from that because at the moment I don't have any other food. The only food I think I have access to is rotting flesh. So I'm really looking forward to eating that. But, you know, it might come to the point where I absolutely have to eat that. The other problem, as you can hear all around me and see from these particles, is the slime, they're tracking me from the surface. So no matter where I am in here, as I walk up and down, they just follow me. And that's a problem because if I need to get out of here, I'm a bit worried that if I do try and get out of here, the slime might just be camping the hole like this, as you can see. Oh, there's a spider there as well. They're just camping and that's really not good. How do I get out of here safely without taking any damage? It's now officially morning and we didn't get anything in our little traps, but that's okay. I'm going to run for it and see if I can make my way out of here without taking any... Ow, 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 ow. <laughs> okay, there's quite a few nasties after me. Why are these spiders interested in me? It's daytime. <gasps> Cows. Okay. Now, uh, this is a massive priority. How do we get cows? Hmm. I can't breed cows. I can only use the cows. So actually having cows doesn't really give us 
very much advantage. <gasps> chicken, chicken. This is top priority. Priority number minus 100. Look at this. You've laid some eggs in the nighttime for me. This is exactly what we needed. I would love to be able to corral these chickens. Yes, another egg. I love you. Thank you. Uh, I would love to be able to corral these chickens back to the base. If we can get unlimited chickens, we will be set for food. And that is... Oh, look, more food. Oh, this is going great. Even some more food here, technically. I think for the time being, this is going to be our chicken room. I've put it right here near the mob traps. And I'm going to have a two-way exit entry here so that no chickens can ever escape because we don't have any fences or anything. So this is the only way to do it. This is just a skylight for the moment because um, otherwise, <laughs> yeah, you can't see anything. So... The way this will work is that I'll always make sure that at least this one is closed and then while I'm in here, once all the chickens are safely in this area, I will then close it off like this and then exit the room like this. So we can close, well we don't have to close that one up but we could. Now the thing is, will we actually get chickens? I have three eggs and three chances and as we've seen before, it's possible to get up to four chickens in a single egg. So let's see, one, no chicken, <laughs> please. Two, no chicken. Three, please give me a chicken. No chicken. Now these slimes are a problem. I, I still need to figure out a good way of getting out of here safely without actually uh, putting myself at risk. I started working on this hole here. So the, the idea here is that I will break this roof. I might have to do this in the day. Oh, get out of my way. <laughs> I might have to do this in the daytime from the surface. Uh, and the, the slimes will drop into this hole and then I'll, I'll close it all up. But it's just for now, I need to see what I'm doing. And the slimes will drop into this hole and I can walk around the outside edges here and make them follow me in. Like, let's see. L let's see if one will try and make its way in. Yes. And uh, that, that's actually not supposed to be like that. That's supposed to be closed like that. Yes. So they'll make their way in here and drop in and hopefully they'll just stay there and they won't be able to get out. And that way it'll reduce the chances of new slime spawning on the surface and we can work up there a little bit more freely. Now all of this uh, infrastructure work that I have to do is causing me to use up all of my saturation. I mean, we've got that one zombie flesh and if this thing gives me uh, hunger, then, oh, hello. If this thing gives me hunger, then uh, all it's gonna do is continuously reduce my hunger haunches. This is so dark in here. I might open up a little light, like, like, yes, yes, that's much better. Okay, it feels pretty safe. So I'm going to head out this way now and hopefully take no damage. <gasps> oh, oh, okay. It's, it's doing a pretty decent job. Now we're gonna head back over to the chickens. Oh, hello, you've come over to visit me and see if they've dropped us any more eggs and hopefully they have. One, hello, thank you, and one more. This is good news. One, no chicken. Two, no chicken. It's just gone morning and I'm a little bit concerned because this slime pit should be full of slime or at least have more slime in it, but there really aren't that many in there. And I can hear a spider up there, but I didn't hear any mobs burning up this morning, so I'm not really sure what's going on. But what I'm going to do is just make a dash for it out this way and hopefully I won't take any damage on the way out. That's still the biggest risk because you, huh, you just don't know what's out there. Uh, I'm sprinting away from that for the moment. Did I just see a creeper fall down into my base? <laughs> oh no, okay. Chicken, do you have any eggs for me? As we know, this is daily priority number one. Chickens, do you have any eggs for me? Each of you has laid an egg, you little beauties. Thank you very much for that. Uh, any more, any more? Uh, no, no. Uh, you both uh, consider yourselves warned. <laughs> you may become lunch. While it's a little bit quiet, I'm going to try and encourage a cow back to the base. You never know what can happen in this game. I might need an emergency stake. We've managed to secure one cow and one pig in the base. Not sure what use they are to us. I'm expending all of my energy punching these ridiculous slime that keep coming after me. How do we nudge a chicken back to the base without, you know, oh, 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 oh without, you know, using up all of our hunger. At, at this point, I have nothing left to eat. Oh, more chickens. 
Wow, this is actually a jackpot. <laughs> this this is brilliant. I'm going to try and get a little bit of uh, lunch because it, I just need something to eat just in case. Uh, I'd rather kill these pigs than the chickens because the chickens are the bringers of life. Yum, yum. Raw chicken. Who knew raw chicken could taste so good? I've been busy here farming away. Out the back here, I've got my little collection of chickens. I have basically been waiting for them to lay eggs and then throwing the eggs against the wall and hoping the chickens would hatch just like that one, then letting them all grow up and continuously picking up all of their eggs. And now I have loads of eggs. I've also killed a few of the farm animals that were just wandering around out there because I want to collect as much emergency food as I can carry in order to go out in into the world and find a village. So right now I'm just going to scoop up the remainder of these eggs, although I think I've run out of inventory space. We can probably get rid of slime balls. We don't really need those. And we're going to take these with us on our journey. The idea is that we'll try and get food along the way, like pork chops or steak or things like that. But in a pinch, we can go underground and I can throw these eggs against the wall and get some chickens or get one chicken, at least one chicken, you know, wait for it to grow up and then eat it in a pinch. You know, it's always good to have an emergency supply. I'm really getting ready to head out now, so it's time to head out and slay the remaining farm animals and gather as much meat as we can for our journey. This is not a very good survival challenge for vegetarians, it's got to be said. Oh, oh, this this almost got me. I don't know where this came from, but occasionally they make their way into the base. And uh, I was just standing here. Oh, just standing here and uh, it attacked me. Unfortunately, I wasn't. Oh, look, look, look. How did you get in? Okay, we're, we're going to... We're going to block off all of these areas. I think the reason was that I had wandered too far away from the base at night time, causing mobs to spawn nearby, which is usually good because I want them to go in these holes, but they're not supposed to spawn down here. It's a bedrock floor. Oh, so, okay. Well, at least I've got my chicken, so I can at least recover my hearts by just filling up my hunger bar, and uh, I should easily recover. Oh, that was close. Now is the time. It's just gone dawn. So unfortunately, all these chickens have got to go. We need to turn them into food and bring them with us. <laughs> this might take a little while. Oh, hi. Ah, no, you were not expected and not wanted. Get out of here. Ah! No, 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 don't take all my health. I need all my health. Oh. Oh! Oh, look, we're not getting off to a great start here. I, I, I'm nearly dying. I just spotted these pigs and oh, I could definitely, oh, I could definitely use the extra food. So slight change of plan. Uh, we're going to go after these pigs and get as much extra food as we can before I go. Uh, but I just want to make sure I don't get killed by slimes. Right. And it's only 10 o'clock. We're off. I've been out wandering the days and nights for about three Minecraft days and three Minecraft nights. No villagers. And some of you might be reeling in the comments right now. Fuck man, you idiot. There aren't any villagers in 12W01A. Well, <laughs> I didn't know that when I started out on this adventure and I've just been wandering around aimlessly, so it seems. Unfortunately, you can't read everything you see on the wiki and it sort of implies that villagers do generate in 12W01A, but I did a bit of testing in between and they don't. On the same seed in the same location, I tested 12W01A, the last snapshot for release 1.1, against release 1.1, and guess what? Villagers in release 1.1. So we're going to take an executive decision. We're going to do an early upgrade to release 1.1, because there's no way I can finish this up without at least finding one village. I know, I know, we skipped ahead a little bit, but it's okay. There weren't really many differences between release 1.1 and snapshot 12w01a, so we can cover all of this over the next few episodes. But right now, I am on a mission to find myself a village, so I'm just... What? What? <laughs> I don't believe it. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. <laughs> I was just going to say that... <laughs> I'm on a mission to find a village, and I have been wandering three days and three nights. I've, I've walked 5,000-something blocks in one direction and 3,000-something blocks in the other direction, and right ahead of me here, within two seconds, literally two seconds, 
we have a village. Let's go check it out. Well, this is a massive village. Hello, do you live here on your own? I was just wandering around and I found this place out in the wilderness. I thought I'd come and check it out. Do you want to give me a big tour? That's it? I know, wow. Wow, what an impressive sight. We've got one farm area here and one hut. And, and you, you just live out here with all of the slimes doing your farming thing, I guess. <laughs> uh, not much to your life, is there? Well, I'm afraid I'm going to need some of your resources, buddy, because this village is not going to cut it. We're going to need to harvest up his wood, get his crops, all the things that we need, and then go off and find a real proper village, I think. While he's out there looking after those slime, I'm going to quickly craft myself up a crafting table. Wow, look at that. We're making progress in this world. I've got to be very careful of the slime who are destroying crops, you nasty little things, because I only have limited food, as we know, and I don't want to waste my energy on all these creeps, and they're going to continuously come near me and um, follow me around. So I might just go in here. This probably isn't the best idea at the moment, but... We'll, we'll do it anyway. And look, we've got a crafting grid. We've got wood. We can make planks. I can make sticks. I can make myself uh, an axe. And with a pickaxe, oh, look at that. With a pickaxe, I can get myself this stone. And with this stone, when I get three of them, I can make myself, oh, I can hear one of those creeps outside right now already. My inventory is too full. I've got too many eggs. We'll just get rid of that for the moment and make a stone, whoops, stone pickaxe. Look at that, the tech tree. We are advancing in the tech tree. I couldn't be happier. So sorry, buddy. Uh, I don't know where you're gonna sleep tonight, but uh, thanks for the resources. <laughs> Bye. The villagers are everywhere. This is what's left of the village I just left. And then I walk a few blocks and here's another village. And I bet you there's another village really close by as well. I, I'm having a bit of a slime problem still. I've, I've started to build a little bit of a border around the outside of this village, and I know that won't stop them spawning on the inside of it, but for... that looks good enough. For the most part, it will keep any of the slime that happened to spawn outside the village contained to the outside at least, and I'll have much less to deal with, and then I can work on a proper system for managing the slime spawns. But I'm just exploring this village at the moment to see what we've got. We've got a church, we've got a library, so we've got access to library books. We've got you, we have a blacksmith. Oh, this is exciting because first, it gives me access to lava, and second, there's a new feature in the blacksmith building in the villages in release 1.1. Let's go inside and take a look. Chests. They're brand new. Let's have a look inside and see what we got. I'm hoping for something really, really good. <laughs> well, okay. A bit of armor, one iron ingot, some gold, some bread, and a diamond. So these are the sort of resources that you can expect to get. And I think these chests actually, oh, oh, I can offload all these stupid eggs. <laughs> actually, um, I think you can get obsidian in these as well. So the more villages that you explore, you should be able to eventually get access to the nether. And that would be quite interesting, don't you think, Mr. Blacksmith? But I think what we have done here is proven that it is possible to survive in a flat world, at least from what I've seen. Is there a better way to spend the evening than with your best librarian buddy, surrounded by horrible slimes in the rain? The real question here today was, can I survive in a super flat world? And I think the answer is essentially yes. Now that I've conquered this village, let's just have a little bit of a look around. I've put this dirt barricade all the way around the village, which means that any slime from over yonder tend to make their way over to try and get me, but they can't make it past the barrier, except for the small ones, which are okay, because they're harmless. The worst they can do is mess up all the crops, but there are ways around that too. The other thing is that now that I have access to these farms, I have access to wheat and water to grow the crops. So as long as I have access to these things, I should be able to continuously replenish my food supplies. The biggest problem, I think, oh, these little slime, <laughs> they make such a mess everywhere. I think the biggest limitation is still wood, because although I have plenty of wood around me and I can continuously mine these logs and get more planks and then get more sticks and make tools, 
I'm limited. I can only make so many hoes before I run out of wood and can no longer till the soil. So it's really crucially important that I make sure that any farmland doesn't get trampled. As for setting my spawn, I've now got my crafting table so I can use wooden planks and the sheep wool that we got, sheep wool, the wool that we got, to make myself a bed. And if I pop that bed inside, tonight when the sun goes down, no, you can stay inside. You're not allowed out. <laughs> Next time the sun goes down, which is pretty soon by the looks of things, I can set my spawn. Hmm, I wonder if the slimes will prevent me being able to sleep. Ah, oh, wouldn't you know it. Maybe if I sleep up here, on top of the church. Much better. The slime problem is now much more under control. Most of them are outside of the barrier, but a lot of them do still spawn inside, but at least it's much more manageable. You, how did you get in here, sneaky little thing? A lot of these crops here are now replanted and they're growing loads and loads of wheat, which I can turn into bread and eat. So I've got plenty of food to last me. Although, as I said, wood is still a limiting factor. My thoughts about that were that I can always run off and find another village, but I don't know how far I'd have to go and I have to go there and come back. Obviously, I have my bed here and I can sleep the night away. Ah, so cozy up here on top of this exposed to all of the elements. And I could definitely live here quite comfortably, transforming the area and making it look very nice and, and livable. I've also got mob drops in the morning where I can go out and collect all the bits and pieces I need, like bone meal or rotting flesh if I need some emergency food. The other interesting thing is that these villages, where are we? These villages do produce gravel, so I can get flint. With flint, I can make arrows. With string, I can make a bow, so I can defend myself if I want to. And if I find a chest, and I think in these versions, I'm pretty sure, but don't quote me, I'm pretty sure that the blacksmith chests will have obsidian inside, so it would be possible to get to the nether. But I'm not going to explore all of those opportunities here in this. I think I proved my point. It is possible to survive in a flat world in release 1.1, so I'm really happy with the outcome of this challenge here, and maybe you should give it a try too. It's much harder in these old versions. The new versions make things way too easy. But that should be the end of things for this episode. I'll see everybody in the next one. Now I have to figure out how to get home. Until then, this has been Bugman CX. You've been watching Minecraft The Journey. I wonder what happened to the mayor? Anybody? Uh, uh, oh, I want to go home. Uh.